Today's gospel, the disciples, that is Peter, James, and John were coming down the mountain. This is after the transfiguration of Jesus. And they ask him the question, why do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? The reason why the scribes said that is because that's what was prophesied. Right? Today's first reading taken from the book of Sirach. This is chapter 48, and this is the great praise of Elijah the prophet. And it says, Elijah, you were destined, it is written, in time to come, to put an end to wrath before the day of the Lord, to turn back the hearts of fathers toward their sons, and to reestablish the tribes of Jacob. So this is the book of Sirach, and it's actually quoting the prophet Malachi. Malachi 4, uh, chapter 4, verse 5 says, Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the great and awesome day of the Lord comes, and he will turn the hearts of fathers to their children and the hearts of children to their fathers. So it's the prophet Malachi that starts all of this. It's the book of Sirach that repeats this. It's the scribes that understand it, and they're telling people that Elijah is going to precede the great day of the Lord, the day of the coming of the Messiah. So this is why the scribes said these things. And so the problem is uh, they didn't recognize it when the mystical Elijah arrived on the scene. Now, how do we know that St. John the Baptist is the mystical, not the literal, Elijah? Because an archangel said so, right? This is Luke chapter 1, verse 17, when the archangel Gabriel is telling Zechariah about his son who is to be born. What does he say? He says, and he will go before him, and he will turn many of the sons of Israel to the Lord their God, and he will go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah. Notice, St. John the Baptist, he is not really Elijah, but he is going in the spirit and power of Elijah. So this is an archangel interpreting the prophet Malachi, and I'm going to accept that interpretation, and I think everyone should. And he will go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah to turn the hearts of the fathers to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready for the Lord a people prepared. So that was the role of St. John the Baptist. Now again, the problem was the scribes, they did not recognize him. So this is what Jesus says in today's gospel. And he says, Elijah will indeed come and restore all things, but I tell you that Elijah has already come. Well, that's kind of interesting. How is it possible that Elijah will indeed come and has already come? Well, that must mean there's going to be two comings. And in fact, that's the reality. Elijah has already come, and they did not recognize him, but did to him whatever they pleased. So the scribes, not recognizing St. John the Baptist, the mystical Elijah, who is there preparing the way of the Lord for his first coming, they did not recognize him, but did to him whatever they pleased. Namely, they handed him over to Herod, who then had him killed at the approval of the scribes. And then the, the disciples understood that he was speaking to them of John the Baptist. So Jesus says that Elijah will indeed come and restore all things, but I tell you that Elijah has already come. So there's two comings of Elijah because there's two comings of Christ. That's why. And so in the first coming, we have the mystical Elijah in the person of St. John the Baptist. The second coming, we will have the real and literal Elijah the prophet along with Enoch. And they will precede the second coming of Christ. 
So let's not be slow to believe in the Scriptures and be hard-hearted, but let's be quick to believe and let's accept the first coming of Christ so as to be ready to accept also his second coming. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.